Tiny robots were crawling all over Fort Benning recently as soldiers put them through their paces to learn how they can help infantrymen downrange. Ron Andrus got eyes on the situation and brings us the scoop on the small robot invasion. Ideally, we want a robot that weighs nothing and does everything. That's what we want. So that soldier can have something he can carry on his back uh, that won't kill him, uh, but can keep him out of harm's way. The Armadillo, Dragon Runner, Recon Scout, and First Look. The U.S. Army and Marines are looking for a few good, lightweight robots that can be carried in a rucksack and rapidly deployed to help keep our infantrymen out of harm's way. You're on foot and you're going to come up to a threat. You don't have the convenience to run back and pick up a 32-pound robot. You need to have something on you at that point to do a quick reconnaissance for that small unit leader, that fire team leader, to take a look and make a decision on the spot, whether it's a threat or not, so they can continue on. Yes, if I didn't have to go into a room first and find out that it was booby-trapped or the next room was and where I could get eyes on with the robot, we wouldn't even continue on. We would stop right there, whereas it would take a fire team getting blown up to figure that all out. The Maneuver Battle Lab recently facilitated the Ultralight Reconnaissance Robot Limited Objective Experiment at McKenna Urban Operations Complex, where soldiers put a variety of small ground robots to the test to learn which ones will be most effective providing our troops with standoff and good situational awareness downrange. So this is a material solution to counter the IED threat that's out there for dismounted infantry in particular. We are looking for something that can be carried easily and can still conduct missions like we're seeing out here this week. So culverts, you know, going into buildings, uh, looking around blind spots in the train and seeing what's around them. Soldiers spent four days employing each of the robots in a variety of challenging missions and terrain, assessing their size, weight, throwability, durability, maneuverability, control, speed, range, and video feed quality. Good camera, obviously. Good visual feedback is always good, important. Lightweight, because we got to carry enough stuff as it is being infantry. And durable, really key points that make them more effective. One of the things we're really interested in is to see how it changes their tactics and to see what specific adaptations they have to make to accommodate the robot. The data collected here is being used to produce baseline concept of operations and employment, capabilities and design requirements, and develop tactics, techniques, and procedures. It's different. we got to stop and go using the robot, and we're more used to the run, 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 get in there really fast. Getting a lot of good data, getting a, a lot of good lessons learned. The soldiers are developing some specific ways to use the robot and to adjust the way that they would normally do things to include the robot. It's good training and uh, good data. This experiment is helping the U.S. Army and Marines expedite the fielding of these ultralight robots to meet the urgent needs of our troops and save lives downrange. All in all, it's keeping the soldier, keeping the Marine out of harm's way, you know, and letting the dangerous work be done by a robot. Ron Andrus, Fort Benning TV.